Friday, July 31st, 1981. Is there anything special about that day? Anything happened that we should remember? Well, there were a few things. Um, the midseason strike by the Major League Baseball players would end after 42 days. This would cause a cancellation of a total of 713 games. But they came to an agreement and started playing again. Also, there was a solar eclipse that covered a portion of the Soviet Union that day. There was something else that happened on that day, on that Friday. Donkey Kong by Nintendo would be released on that day in America. And that would forever change the way platforming games would be in the years to come. We all know what happened. Uh, we all know the history of Jumpman, how he became Mario, and here we are over 40 years later. And, and he is the staple for Nintendo. And they've made billions and billions of dollars. But there's something else we should remember. There were a lot of other platform games that came along in the 80s. Many of them were really, really good. And often they kind of get lost in the shuffle and forgotten. One of those platformers that had a big impact on my life was a game called Minor 2049er. Now, I first played this game on the Atari 5200 uh, back in 1983. I was, I was a very lucky uh, 12 to 13 year old uh, when it came to having video games. I had been given a ColecoVision with an Atari adapter, 2600 adapter, for Christmas of 1982. My parents had caught me totally off guard when they got me the ColecoVision. Um, it was without question the best Christmas gift I ever got in my entire life. I think you could compare it to um, Ralphie uh, when he got his, uh, his BB gun, his Red Rider. It was definitely my Red Rider moment uh, when I was growing up as far as Christmas gifts go. And the neighbors who I was really close with, uh, uh, two boys were in my same age, they had gotten an Atari 5200. So we spent a lot of time going back and forth, you know, to each other's house, uh, playing games and stuff. And they got minor 2049er, and I immediately fell in love with the game. Even even with the 5200 joysticks making it incredibly frustrating sometimes, it was a really, really fun platform to play. And I never finished it. Um, it was just simply too difficult. Um, in fact, I, I finished it for the first time yesterday, <laughs> uh, playing on an emulator, and uh, I was using a uh, CX40 Atari 2600 joystick, which made it a lot better. And I and even then, if it wasn't for save states on the emulator, it would have been incredibly difficult. So it is a very hard game. Now, part of the reason I feel like the game doesn't get the credit it deserves is, is when you look back and you see everything that it was ported to. Uh, the Texas Instruments line, IBM PC compatibles, Apple II computers, Commodore 64, VIC-20, and it came out for the Atari 2600, the 5200, it came to the ColecoVision, which I would end up playing later on after the 5200 version because it came out later. Um, and I, the ColecoVision actually had an extra level, and you might even argue that graphically it looked a little bit better, brighter, maybe more colorful. But to me, there was just something about the 5200 version that just kept bringing me back. I just thought it was a little bit better. So it just it seems to stick in my mind more as far as just being a such a fantastic game for when it came out. If you've, if you've never played it, if you're a younger person and you're getting into retro gaming, I highly recommend checking it out. I really, really do. Now, let's go uh, see some gameplay real quick. And then we'll check a look at the game as far as... Uh, collectability and rarity goes. Now the first maybe three or four levels really aren't too tough. Oh, one thing to consider though is uh, Bounty Bob is, as far as platform works go, he's not the most athletic fella in the world. I mean, especially when compared like a Mario and, you know, Mario Brothers or Super Mario Brothers. Um, he can't jump very far and he can't fall very far without dying. It's something you'll kind of learn as you go. Um, not a big issue on the first few boards, but 
on the when you start getting up there, any fifth board on up, you have a lot more small platforms you have to jump on and everything. And uh, it, 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 being able to judge your distances gets to be more difficult. You have a you have a timer at the top, like you have with Donkey Kong or any other most other games. Uh, the quicker you get done, you get the remaining time as a, as a bonus. Pretty common in every every game like this. Okay, on this board you have the slides. Now the stuff you see that you can pick up every time you grab that, you know you can kill the mutants for, you, you know they start to blink. You see, if you have a few seconds where you can take them out. They're really not aggressive. I mean, they don't chase you like um, like the ghosts do in Pac-Man or anything like that. They they kind of have predetermined paths they just go back and forth on. But one little touch and, and you're fried. Love the scrubbing sound as he walks and covers up each piece of the of each platform. Now, um, I'm playing this with a with a regular Atari 2600 joystick, and it's a lot easier than it was. Uh, those those 5200 controllers just didn't work well with this game. I uh, got a get a free life of 10,000 points. Okay, this one you had the elevators. Now, this is one part where the, where the 5200 uh, joysticks were nice because you had the keypad right there in your hand. So it was easy to select the elevators to go to the different levels. And obviously, I'm using my, since I'm using an emulator, I'm using my keyboard on my computer to do that. Not quite as quick. And that does become a factor at the very end of the game, toward the end of the game. <laughs> you have to wait a few seconds for the elevator to become operational again. Okay, you see things get a little more hairy with these platforms. You hear that? <laughs> That means you're getting close to much further. You're going to die, hit the ground if you don't make, if you miss the platform. It's kind of funny how his face has a frown on it whenever you jump or uh, go down a slide. Get that yeah. So you get cutting it close. And now that cocktail above me right there, that thing'll kill you. And I'll, <laughs> I'll show you in a minute. They don't really say anything about that. It's kind of a kind of a cheap death, if you ask me. You think it's a power up to kill the mutants? No, it's radioactive. Ah, 
<laughs> See, I didn't fall that far and it killed me. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, talk about the, the programmer and a little bit more about the game. Okay, here's a picture of Bill on the right of this right of the screen there. That's I think that's in the last few years. Um, now, the game itself, of course, we already talked about how it was ported to so many different platforms. But uh, Electronic Games Magazine, I remember reading that uh, years ago. Um, it had their, they called the Archie Awards. I think that was just short for arcade, I believe. But uh, but Minor 2049er uh, was Electronic Game of the Year in their January 1984 issue for the previous year of 83, I believe it was. But um, Bill uh, got his start uh, writing code as an employee at Radio Shack. <laughs> And uh, I'm not going to go into this. There's plenty of information on there. If you want to, there's a there's a long interview with him that was done a few years ago. It's on YouTube. Just look it up. All right, we're over here at Atari Age. Have y'all checked out Atari Age yet? If you haven't been there and signed up, you really ought to do it. Doesn't cost a thing, and it's great for you if you're a retro gaming enthusiast. Okay, uh, minor 2049 or for the 5200. It's uh, a, it's a common game, three and four. There was two copies. You had the uh, standard label and the gold label. Here is the gold label. I love the red cartridge. That's just, that's really cool with the big five. And that's neat. Um, it's got Bill's name on there. Pretty cool. And then here is the uh, standard label version. I kind of like the gold one myself. I just, I just think that looks really cool. Um, really cool. Now. Uh, if we jump over to eBay, and these are active listings. Uh, you can see you copy with the manual for 50, 60, cartridge alone 40, 44, 44. Now um, 45. That's an empty box, no game. 22. It's, it's strange. There's only 15 results listed. I mean, to to look at the Atari age results, you would think it'd be easy to find. Um, but uh, the 52, maybe that has something to do with the 5200. Uh, I mean, it had such a short lifespan. Uh, Atari axed it after only, what, two or three years? So I don't know. But uh, this is a game. I, I don't have a huge collection. I really don't. I don't have much of anything. But this is one in the future I wouldn't mind getting a boxed copy of. It wouldn't have to be sealed. Uh, but it would be cool to kind of have a boxed copy. Uh, let's jump. Okay, here's some right here. It's $80. Um, 84.15. So they're available. This one's got the little registration card. That's cool. Eighty-five dollars. Eh. Okay. Now on the sold side. Uh, okay. There's one that sold for thirty-one, forty-one. Uh, there's a manual about itself for eighteen. So it looks like they're just they're getting what they're asking. What the asking price is forty dollars. Doesn't look like there's a version with a. Let's see, box and manual. Yeah, okay, for fifty bucks. Cool. Okay, it's available. It, but you, it doesn't look like you're going to pick up a copy for five or ten dollars or anything like that. Pretty cheap there, Bill. Did you think after forty years I'd remember the radioactive, radioactive cocktail that you left for us? Okay. If y'all made it to the end, I appreciate it. Um, couple things I want to go over uh, before I end the video. Uh, first, thanks for watching. Uh, my last video I did um, is it's been about 12 days. I'm, I meant to get this done sooner. I just had a lot going on. Um, it's at almost 10,000 views. So I'm actually thank you to the YouTube gods. And I think that one video I, I got like 100 and something subscribers. I mean I had like 20 something and now I'm like at 175 I think and uh, all the subscribers didn't come from that one video but I think people watching that video watch some other videos and I picked up some others others from there so uh, naturally I'm I'm thrilled um, I'm glad y'all are watching I promise I'll try to keep making stuff that y'all want to see I really really appreciate it um, hope a lot of y'all see this and you like it if you do please uh, hit the like button and, and if you haven't uh, subscribed to the channel yet I'd really appreciate it um, uh, it gives me a lot of hope it really does because I uh, I'm gonna leave a link to my very first video uh, for those of y'all who have subscribed um, 
you can kind of get the backstory why I'm doing this uh, and why it's so important to me that it works out. Anyway, uh, I don't have anything else to say. I appreciate y'all watching. I would like you to chime in on the comments. Uh, what do you think about uh, this game, Minor 2049er? Did it have an impact on you like it did me? Do you have fond memories from it? Um, did you want to kill the 5200 joystick <laughs> back in the early 80s like I did sometimes? Let me know. And uh, thank you all again. Have a great one. See you next time. Bye-bye.